First thing I'm going to show you is the Illinois glaciation boundary. That's the second to last glaciation in Illinois. And it advanced southward to uh, Carbondale, St. Louis, and into westward into eastern Iowa. Uh, it tremendously altered our landscapes. And for example, on the left is a morainic ridge we think formed during that glaciation. And on the right is a uh, ice wall channel system with a fan. And that contains sort of sandy materials that we see today. A couple other examples of the landscapes. Here, here's a morainic ridge, we believe, south of Highland, Illinois. And on the right, a uh, came-like hill with sand deposits overlooking a lake plain. Um, and so the different deposits we find within the landscape include a uh, glacial till, which is a pebbly, fine-grained clay material. And on the left is a large boulder that we discovered from a landowner. Uh, 2.6 billion years old is the age we obtained. and so. That probably came from somewhere in Ontario or Quebec. Um, another type of deposit is, is a sand. This is a locally found uh, in the Kaskaskia Valley here. And on the left is a paleosol that helps us separate Wisconsin deposits from Illinois episode deposits. That red band on the left is, is that paleosol as well. And on the right are lake sediments, which we find uh, periodically. And they, they occasionally have wood, fossil wood, and shell material. Uh, we can uh, reconstruct the direction of ice flow from striations, which are scratches in the, in the bedrock, or from pebble fabrics, uh, elongated pebbles, and measuring their directions. And we can kind of put that together with the bigger picture, uh, <clears throat> where we have kind of mega lineations on these new DMs that we're obtaining recently, and uh, streamlined features that are up to several kilometers long. And so kind of putting that together with the striation directions and other indicators, and we can put together a, a, a map of Illinois showing perhaps margins and sublobes as the ice retreated back to Lake Michigan. And even on a county scale, we can see small bulges in the margin that are a few kilometers or so wide. Um, so we didn't have time for questions, but I threw in a few questions, uh, such as why did it go so far south? Uh, Maybe because of the soft substrate and the regional topography, may maybe ice streaming. Um, there are a lot of other questions that we don't know the answer to. Uh, as far as the chronology, the, it's too old for rate of carbon dating. The, the wood's too old, but uh, we use other methods, and we think now it's about 160 to 130,000 years old uh, based on newer methods, and we're still testing that out. Um, there are a number of societal impacts to our mapping and understanding these deposits, including you know, construction, groundwater, earthquake hazards. Um, I have a list here of a whole bunch of uh, possible impacts, you know, such as sand and gravel resources, uh, agricultural, and understanding our past climate. And the list can go on and on. So that kind of brings us to uh, fossils, which everybody loves. And, here we have a, a site where we found maybe 15 or 20 different spruce logs that we've collected. And Samantha Kaplan has determined they're mostly black and white spruce. So we think that's a pretty typical representation. Uh, there's, there are also spruce needles found when you wash out the sediment. And all in all, that kind of tells us we think we had a boreal condition, maybe something like northern, northern Ontario for the uh, climate analog. Um, a few other fossils we find include uh, gastropods and mollusks. Uh, they're mostly small, maybe a few millimeters or less, but they do help us understand the environment and the correlations of the material. Uh, seeds are occasionally found. I, I'm not very good at that, but occasionally if, if I send to someone, we'll find a, something like an aster seed. And Brandon Curry <laughs> helps me to look at the ostracods, and he's talking later this afternoon about that. Uh, they live in lakes. So uh, the final thing is the pollen. We, we don't have many sites with pollen, but this one shows a, a, a dominance of spruce vegetation and some pine and some various herbs and mosses that are kind of confirm a boreal environment at that time. Uh, so stepping back at the big picture, we, uh, the Illinois glaciation was this uh, second to last one in a whole sequence of cold and warm climates and was kind of sandwiched between the Wisconsin and the pre-Illinois glaciation. So uh, that's my, my summary would be, you know, 90% of the state was glacial at the time. It had tremendous alteration of the landscape, and we think we had a boreal forest cover and maybe 10 degrees colder than today, Celsius. So thank you.